Charlie Kirk, much like other conservatives, loves to scaremonger about how the left allegedly wants to destroy the holidays. And the latest example is Thanksgiving. And so what's his evidence for why the left allegedly hates Thanksgiving? Let's watch. The left has always hated Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving can be interpreted as a religious holiday if you believe in giving thanks to a creator. But they hate Thanksgiving because they believe there is nothing you should be thankful for in America. This is an awful place. It is cancerous, rotten to the core. Tear it all down. Burn it from within. Why would you be thankful? Instead, we need a revolution. Remember, as the Students for a Democratic Society radicals once wrote in the 1960s, they said, conflict is the origin of everything. What happens when you're thankful? By definition, you're less likely to be involved and engaged in conflict. Thanksgiving is supposed to de-escalate any sort of pre-existing issues in our country. And now they're using the virus as an excuse for you not to be thankful. He is so bad on camera, my God, he's terrible at this. It's not a difficult job, he's so bad. My favorite thing about that video is how he's not saying anything substantive at all. Like he's just screaming like about nonsense with no evidence, mm -hmm. making all sorts of crazy accusations. But he's doing it while like holding a pen, like you know, Holding mm -hmm. a pen and he, he takes these long pauses to look at his computer. Like to, let me, hold on, hold on. Let me reevaluate my notes for a second, okay? Very it serious It has to be talking here. points. And then he looks back at the camera and says <laughs> more lunatic stuff that makes no sense. Like you had to look at your notes. You have to look at your computer to remember your lunatic talking points. Yeah, that you're making up. Yeah, my favorite thing is that I'm glad you reminded me of the pen. In one of the videos I saw him, I've seen like three videos from that show, which I still can't believe exists. Every time I see it, I think, my God, how is this a thing? He once, because you know, like you're supposed to get fired up on camera. He once took his pen and he did this. Mm. Cause he was so mad and it just made me really sad for him. And his whole demeanor and look makes me really sad. I described it this morning as like he woke up on the beach five minutes late to do his show. That's the vibe I'm getting off of him. Oh my God, I don't know how that's a thing. This I, is what no. you get when billionaires decide who your media figures are no, and not organic. I, like, no, all kidding aside. Just look at him for a second. He looks like hell. No, I, like someone needs to do a wellness check. <laughs> and I'm not I'm not kidding. I know it sounds like I am. I'm being 100% serious. He his hair is constantly a mess. He he has like ramblings of a madman on the whiteboard behind him. Like mm -hmm. what is he writing? What is he talking about? He's accusing people of The left hates Thanksgiving because they don't believe there's anything to be thankful for. Okay, cool. Can you like quote one of these leftists that, you know, said something along those lines? Can you provide any e like I Are we thankful love for cancel Thanksgiving. culture or something? It's it's Don't so we love the communism? Like we're thankful for something, right? Even in your twisted worldview, it's we're thankful so for kale, I don't, almond milk? Before, like we're thankful for something. Before I saw that video, I thought his argument was going to be, "Oh, the left they don't like Thanksgiving because of all of the murder and all of the massacres of Native Americans. How dare they? I thought he was gonna go in that direction mm. where I would be like, okay, he's got a good point. The left does critique the whole notion, like how Thanksgiving came about. And I think that that's a valid critique for sure. But if you take history out of it and you just focus on what Thanksgiving has become, right? On a very surface level, superficial level, who doesn't love getting together with their families <laughs> to share a delicious meal, right? Yeah. Whether you're a vegan, whether you're not a vegan, whether you like mac and cheese. Um, by the way, if you don't like mac and cheese, you're not invited to my Thanksgiving. Who are you? Why would you even be there? Um, but no, I mean, obviously I'm kidding. Oh my but God, I'm so God, hungry right now. God, that looks so good right but now. Who, who put this up? This is making me so mm. hungry. Mm. Truly in your heart of hearts truly believe that this is a human being, this- Without a doubt. Without a doubt? Yes. This is a dolphin fetus. So let me- Without a doubt, a dolphin so fetus is a human being. This is a human fetus, look how similar they look. But 
quite different. Dolphin. You just confirmed that a dolphin in, in life. Do you confuse dolphins for human babies often? <laughs> okay, I love that video. That was amazing. We're going to show you the conversation in a little more context in just a second. But I want to show you what a human embryo, because it's six weeks. It's not even a fetus yet, it's an embryo. This is what a human embryo looks like. And I would venture to say that is not the same thing as a viable human being or baby outside of the mother's womb, okay? By the way, human fetuses and embryos clearly also have tails. That is a human, that is what a human looks like. Cute baby, cute child, okay? Stock photo of an adorable child, very different from a non-viable embryo, which in the state of Texas, you are not able to get aborted because of their anti-abortion, anti-reproductive rights law. Um, so yeah, I love that side by side. I just We're just trying to help. We're trying to help the Charlie Kirks of the world understand the difference between a non-viable embryo and an actual living, breathing human being who typically gets neglected or trashed by conservatives who want to deny certain um, social services to them if they happen to be poor. Yeah, no, you got to give Ben Glebe all the credit in the world for one of the best owns I've ever seen. Uh, and he, and Charlie, my, do you not? Know, you step right into that man. Like everybody knows. Like if you're in law school, the thing they teach you is don't ask a question you don't know the answer to. If you're in the middle of a debate and somebody asks you a question, you should be really careful, right? And he's like, oh, absolutely, that's definitely a human. Oh, his face. It's my favorite part. <laughs> that face, though, no, that face. Okay, that's a rare moment he had his hair combed at least. Um, so. Uh, but now Glebe has owned them so hard mm -hmm. that from now on, whenever you see an embryo, even they're gonna hesitate. They're like, oh, is that a dolphin one? Is that a different animal? Because you're not really sure because they all look very similar. You know why? Because they're embryos. They're not actually fully grown humans or dolphins, which look very different. And so, look, you can go back further and you can go all the way to the sperm and the egg. And they don't look human either. Okay, so this idea of like, well, I mean, we used to look like that at some point. So and we've done this a million times. Is every sperm sacred? <laughs> Was, uh, you know, were they yeah, right in is, life of Brian? It is, like I've said before, it is convenient that to them, life begins at the moment of conception, right? That's very convenient to male conservatives. Uh, now, again, for me, uh, and also for the Supreme Court that ruled in Roe v. Wade. Uh, the important aspect of reproductive rights has to do with viability of the fetus, right? Is the fetus viable outside the womb? Then you can talk about uh, so, you know, limiting uh, access to abortions, right? And I think that in that case, that's, that's a reasonable uh, ruling. But when you're having a conversation about a non-viable embryo, no, it's really about controlling women and forcing them to carry out or carry to term a pregnancy that they don't want. It's about punishing women who might have engaged in sexual activity that they did so for pleasure, right? Did so for fun. How dare you? You're not allowed to do that in the United States. We need, or in a lot of other right-wing countries, we need to punish. We need to control. That's what it's really about. But Jenk, the fuller context doesn't make Charlie Kirk look any better. So I wanted to also provide that to be fair to Charlie Kirk, if you wanna see it that way. Now let's watch. Question, do human beings have tails? I'm not exactly sure the essence of the do question. Do human beings have tails? Do you have a tail? You know, I have never met anyone with a tail. I'm not exactly sure the essence. Exactly, the but fetuses the have tails. Kind of proves that at that phase, they are not a human being, they got tails. Humans don't have tails, we're not dinosaurs. Let me even show you a photo if I may, okay? Do you truly in your heart of hearts, truly believe that this is a human being? This- Without a doubt. Without a doubt? Yes. This is a dolphin fetus. So let me- Without a doubt, a dolphin fetus so is a human being. This is a human fetus, look how similar they look, but- Quite different, dolphin, you just confirmed that a dolphin, in, in life, do you confuse dolphins for human babies often? So let me you ask you a question. You go to SeaWorld and you're like, someone's got human babies in that aquarium. Get the human babies out of the aquarium. Well, you labeled it as a human fetus. No, you I did, did not. Dishonestly. No, I did not. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't label it as, yeah. a, as a human fetus. I, I went back and rewatched the tape just to be sure. He never said it was human. 
and he, and you can go back and watch it. Uh, and so, but Kirkley, Kirk at that point is so owned that he, there's no way out of that. I mean, he's in a cul-de-sac. Mm. <laughs> that's a dead end that you're not gonna be able to get out of. Nope. Uh, protect the dolphin embryos. Uh, Glebe er, owns people so hard, I wind up having to get into fights for him. I'll talk about this in the in the bonus episode for the members. Uh, Maybe we did this. Maybe he will. Yeah, we did this segment where Ben Glebe went into that restaurant in in Orange County uh, that doesn't allow masks or vac anyone vaccinated, and he put on a mask and they assaulted him. And we did a segment saying, "Oh, Ben did a great job." The lawyer for that restaurant saw me somewhere in L.A. And nearly uh, assaulted me. He said, "How dare you?" <laughs> and and Ben was making such a great point in that segment too. He's like, "Am I not allowed to protect people? Are you hitting me because I'm trying to protect people?" And so that then the, their lawyer sees me and he's like, "You won't be safe in the streets." He said that to you. Yeah. And I said, "What do you mean? What do you mean? Tell me exactly what you mean." Doesn't sound like a very <laughs> uh, good lawyer. <laughs> well, I mean, is it surprising that he represents these clowns? Yeah.